Hello, everyone. My name is Chen Wang. I'm from the Google Speech Team. Today, I will introduce a system we developed named the Voice Filter. This system separates the voice of a target speaker by conditioning a spectrogram masking algorithm on the speaker embedding. Before we go to the technical details, I have a demo video on YouTube. You can easily find it by searching for voice filter. OK, the demo is cool. Let's see how it works. The problem we are trying to solve is known as the cocktail party problem. When multiple talkers are speaking and you only want to listen to one person, that's easy for human but difficult for machines. If there are multiple channels, like human has two ears, multi-channel blind separation algorithms can be used. But many devices, like mobile phones, only have one microphone, then single-channel blind separation algorithms can be used. Let's look at an example. Here are three spectrograms. The first is a female voice, the second is a male voice, and the last is a mixed one. I'm going to play them. Similar to an acoustic yeah. model. What's the weather? Is it gonna rain? Similar What's the weather? To an acoustic Is it gonna model. rain? If we want to recover the male voice from the mixed one, intuitively we can use an eraser on the spectrogram to remove the harmonics of the female voice. In practice, this is doable, and we call that spectrogram masking. There are already lots of great work on single-channel blind separation. For example, the deep clustering, deep attractor network, and the permutation invariant training. But these are not really what we need, because in our cases, we really know whom to listen to. For example, if you have an Android phone or Google Home device, you can enable voice match, which will store a voice profile on the device. With this voice profile, we are no longer blind. And here I will explain why blindness sucks. First, in blind separation, you don't know how many sources are there in the runtime. You may be doing great when the input has multiple sources, but you also don't want to mess up when the input is already single source. Second, blind separation usually has multiple outputs. You still need to pick the one you need, for example, to run ASR. You can simply pick the novelist one from the outputs or use an additional speaker verification step, but it's not something trivial. Finally, permutation invariant training is usually very expensive. So with the proposed voice filter system, we can say goodbye to blindness. We make use of the speaker embedding, which can be acquired during user enrollment. This speaker embedding will condition the separation system to output the clean signals from only the target speaker. Next, I will talk about our models. We basically have two models, and they are separately trained with different datasets. The speaker encoder model takes an utterance as input and outputs a speaker discriminative embedding. The voice filter model takes both a noise spectrogram and the embedding as input, and outputs a mask. The speaker encoder is also known as the D-Vector system. It's basically a multi-layer LSTM network. You can find more details in this paper. I also uploaded my lecture on this system to YouTube, so you could watch this video if you are interested. Basically, our D-Vector system is a highly scalable system, trained on hundreds of thousands of speakers. It's very efficient, and has proven better performance than other systems, like a cross entropy, triplet noise, or tuple n to n noise. The second network, the voice filter network, is the real focus of this work. And here is the system architecture. There are three inputs during training. The reference audio is the one that we compute the D vector, and we repeat the D vector every frame as the input to the LSTM. The noisy audio is the one to be enhanced. And the clean audio is the ground truth to compute the noise function. The voice filter network outputs a mask. Then we multiply this mask with the noisy spectrogram to get the enhanced spectrogram. Here I will explain some of the design details. 
First, we concatenated the D vector with the noisy spectrogram between convolutional layers and LSTM. This is because convolutional layers are used to capture context information, but D vector is already very compact, so there's no need to put it before convolutional layers. Second, we are doing masking, but that's not the only way to do it. Many people use a regression network to directly output the enhanced spectrogram. We find masking is faster and has better performance, so we are using masking instead of regression in this work. About the noise function, we are computing the L2 reconstruction noise for both the magnitude and the complex spectra. This is following the practice of the existing previous work. We also know that human hearing is nonlinear, so we use a power law compression of 0.3 to equalize the importance of quiet sounds relative to loud ones. When we reconstruct the enhanced audio, we need the full complex spectrogram. For the magnitude, we can use the one we get by masking the input. For the phase component, we directly use the phase of the noisy input without any processing. Here are the topologies of our networks. Speaker encoder is simply three layers of LSTM. Voice filter has many more layers, including two-dimensional convolutional layers, LSTM layer, as well as fully collected layers. Next, I will talk about the data. The data requirements for speaker encoder and the voice filter are very different, so we train them separately. For the speaker encoder, we need a very large number of speakers for training, such that we can generalize well to unseen speakers. Our datasets consist of 34 million utterances from more than 100,000 speakers, but we don't need any transcription of the data. The data requirement for the voice filter network is a bit different. For example, if we want to evaluate a speech recognition performance, then we will need the transcriptions. There are some good public datasets like the Chime Challenge dataset, but remember, voice filter needs a reference audio for enrollment, so we cannot directly use Chime. Instead, we use VCTK and LibreSpeech. We mentioned that our training workflow needs three audios, the clean, noisy, and the reference audio. We can get them all from a clean dataset. So this is the data processing workflow. From the clean dataset, we extract three audios. The reference and the clean audios are from the same speaker. The interference audio is from a different speaker. We sum the signals from the clean and the interference audios to generate the noisy audio for training. Next, I will show some of our experimental results. We are going to use two metrics, word error rate and the source to distortion ratio. We report word error rate because our ultimate goal is to improve speech recognition, ASR. Our success criterion has two parts. First, if the audio is noisy from multiple speakers, voice filter should reduce word error rate, meaning we are being really helpful. Second, if the audio is already clean from a single speaker, then voice filter should have the same word error rate, meaning we are being harmless. Source to distortion ratio is about the quality of the enhanced audio. It's a popular metric in source separation, so we also use that. For the word error rate, we are going to look at four numbers for each experiment. The clean word error rate with and without voice filter, and the noisy word error rate with and without voice filter. We hope that after we use the voice filter, clean word error rate is the same, and the noisy word error rate is lower. In our first experiment, we use LibreSpeech as our training and evaluation dataset, but try different network topologies. Our experiments show that bidirectional LSTM has the best performance compared with unidirectional LSTM or non-recurrent networks. On clean speech, the word error rate is 11.1, .1, which is very close to when there is no voice filter. On noisy speech, it reduces word error rate from 55.9 to 23.4, which is a huge improvement. We also tried to fix the network topology and use different training data. We found that even if we evaluate on VCTK, 
we have better performance when we train on LibreSpeech instead of VCTK. This is because VCTK has too few number of speakers, only 99, while LibreSpeech has more than 2,000 speakers. So the size of the dataset really matters a lot. Here we also report the source to distortion ratio on our LibreSpeech experiments. With the bidirectional LSTM, we can see that the median SDR is much larger than without the voice filter. Specifically, the last row is the experiments of using the permutation invariant training. Our voice filter has even better performance than this approach. Some of you may question that why the mean SDR is so high even without the voice filter. This is because when we add speech noise to the clean audio, the speech noise might be extracted from the silent part of the interference audio, ending up with some noisy audios are not actually noisy at all. But the clean and interference audios are actually of the same volume in our experiments. Finally, conclusions and future work. The contributions of this paper include uh, we proposed this speaker conditioned voice separation framework called voice filter. We demonstrated that our system has significant word error rate improvement for multi speaker scenarios and the minimal degradation in single speaker scenarios. It also has better source to distortion ratio than permutation invariant training, and the performance could be further improved by using more data. Some of the future work directions. For the long term, we want to build a model that is tiny and that performs online inference to make it more portable. We want the model to do speech separation and denoising at the same time to make it more useful. We also want to train the model jointly with ASR, which should give us even better performance. I also have a video demo of our early prototype, which you can find on YouTube. If you want to learn more about this work or listen to more samples, you can check this website on GitHub. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.